This is John Black, Super Chemist. This is not an instructional video. It is just a vlog showing a video account of some chemistry experiments I have done or I'm learning about. I do not go over all safety concerns, so if you repeat anything in the video, you do it at your own risk. This is John Black, Super Chemist. I'm here to talk about the Victor Meyer reaction to make nitroalkanes. Now, Chem Player already did a video on this, and I have the chemical equation up there because he used uh, ethyl iodide, whereas I'm going to use ethyl bromide. Okay. You can see how it comes out. You're going to make some ethyl nitroethane, and the uh, silver iodide will precip out, right? Simple reaction you use diethyl ether as your uh, solvent, when nice and cold. Um, zero C. Now he uses a little less um, ethyl iodide than silver nitrite um, stoichiometrically. Okay. And the reason why he uses it, does that, is so he can test when the when the reaction is done. Okay. Um, if he puts more ethyl iodide than the nitrite, when he gets done, there's still going to be ethyl iodide in there, and he'll never know when he's done. This way, there's less ethyl iodide, so it's definitely going to be used up. And uh, he can take a little sample out of the reaction pot and do this reaction where he makes an ester. He's going to get some silver nitrate and some ethanol. And if there's any, if there's any ethyl iodine in there, it will make an ester, a nitrate ester. And also silver iodide, which will precip out. So when he tests it, if anything precips out, he knows there's still ethyl iodide in there and the reaction isn't done, right? Um, he got a 57% yield, okay? My first thought with that low yield is that, hey, add some more ethyl iodine. You know what I mean? You're, you're not using all your silver nitrite up um you know i could see why he did it it was so that he could uh you know know when he was done you know what i mean if once he used up all the silver nitrite if there's still excess ethyl iodide in there he can never tell it'll always test saying there's more in there he'll never you know what i mean so i could see why he did it okay but my first thought again was add more uh ethyl iodide and you know because you're not using all your silver nitrite okay now since then i found out that that equation up on top here you know where it says he's making nitroethane that's true but there's actually two reactions taking place this one that we already mentioned but also this one this one you can see it's the same exact thing. You're going to be making a, instead of a nitrate ester, you're going to make a nitrite ester. And again, you'll have your silver iodine precipitating out. Um, so my whole point is, and you can see how this is so similar. Look at up here how you're making your nitrite. I mean, your ester, your nitrate ester. You have silver nitrate, silver nitrate. You have ethyl iodide, you have ethyl iodide. One difference is you don't you're not putting in the ethanol, but you're still going to make this. You know what I mean this ester. Um, but my whole point is is that because there are two competing reactions, right? That me saying oh I had more ethyl bromide is going to help or ethyl iodide um, because your silver nitrite is obviously not all used up. It is all used up. It's used up on this reaction here, this side reaction, and then this. Is a gas so it just boils off okay so adding ethyl bromide extra or ethyl iodine is futile right so there's nothing i can really change about the way he did the reaction i'm probably going to do it the exact same way um but i did find out one thing um because it's so hard to find anything out about this reaction it's it's unreal but the one sentence i did find was the greater the carbonium contribution to the transition state the more nitrite ester is produced and the less nitroalkane is produced, okay? What does that mean to me? Uh, carbonium 
you know, that's like a carbocation. I think carbocation, I think SN1 reaction, right? Um, so SN1 is always going to be a secondary or tertiary. If you have a secondary alkyl bromide or a tertiary alkyl bromide, you're going to do the SN1. Uh, and that means that you're going to have the nitrate ester more, okay? If you use a primary bromoalkane, then there's no carbocation. You can't have a primary carbocation, right? So you're going to have to do an SN2 reaction, all right? These are competing reactions, right? We have a primary, you know, ethyl. That's primary. So we're obviously on the right track to doing the SN2, which is will give us the nitroalkane instead of the ester. Okay, we got one good thing going for us, right? Um, so let's go over the mechanisms. I don't know the mechanisms. This is all guesswork right here, basically. But if you have a secondary, right, you have your um, silver is positive, your bromine is negative. You know, they link up. They precip out as a salt. And you're left with this carbocation. But look at the carbocation. Remember, you also have silver nitrite, right? So here's your anion from that silver. You can see it has a negative. The carbocation has a positive. Obviously, you just draw a line here and erase the positive and negative like I did over here. Here's that bond right here. Um, and it forms an ester, okay? That is all understandable. I can, I can see that. You know, it makes all sense, right? Whether it's right or not, it makes sense. <laughs> now look at the SN2 reaction here. We got a primary instead of a secondary uh, alkyl bromide, right? The silver and the bromine link up again because it's positive and negative, right? But the thing is, is the bromine can't come off to form that salt because you can't ha there's no such thing as a primary carbocation, really. I mean, unless under really, really extreme conditions, right? So my only guess, and this is a big guess, is that the reason why the negative O oxygen can't come in, and like over here, you know, the negative goes to the positive. This carbon is positive because this bromine is so electronegative, it's hogging up all the electron density, making a partial positive charge on this carbon, okay? Why doesn't the oxygen go in since it's negative and do what it does up here which is form an ester why the only thing i can think of is that silver is such a giant molecule i mean people think bromine is a big molecule bromine is a tiny little peep squeak compared to silver okay um so the only thing i can think is that if the oxygen comes up this silver and all of its uh, electrons, because it's you know the cloud of electrons coming off of this is a million electrons on silver, and it's so giant that, that the steric interference does not allow this oxygen to come up there as easy. It probably comes up there sometimes, but you know what I mean. Obviously, that's why you get a low yield. Um, but it also helps these electrons, right? This is a trigonal planar here. These electrons on that nitrogen. That lone pair must come up and, and you know connect make the line right to make your nitroethane all right now this is all just a guess i but it makes sense right silver's big this should come up there and it don't you got lone pairs here on the nitrogen obviously there's some kind of steric interference that causes the nitrogen to come up here half of the time or at least 57 percent of the time and link up to make a nitroalkane. That's the only thing I can think. Now, if anyone has anything to say about what, you know, give me some info. If you have some info and you know, you know, of why this would happen or anything I'm saying in this video. Now, like I said, I'm going to do this Victor Meyer reaction, make some nitroethane. I'm going to use ethyl bromide instead of ethyl iodide. Other than that, though, chem players, uh, experiment or video it's going to be exactly like mine uh, i don't see any differences that i'm going to make um, but after he makes the nitroethane he does do a video on a henry reaction 
where you connect. And reaction is where you react to aldehyde and a nitro alkane, as you can see up here. And you need a primary amine to catalyze things. And you basically connect them up and you'll make a nitro alkene with a double bond next to a nitro group. All right. If you want to know, this has nothing to do with the mechanism. It's just how to draw from here to here. Okay. It's not, this ain't the mechanism. But if you want to know what you're going to get if you have two products, you have your nitroalkane and you have your, your aldehyde. You draw your aldehyde without, you draw your aldehyde without the oxygen. Then you put a carbon on it, right? That carbon is from your nitroalkane, a carbon that is attached to the, the nitro group, right? And then you just add a nitro group, boom. And then you count how many carbons was in that nitroalkane. There were two, one, two. So there's one, then I add another one, two. And that's it, that's your product. That's how you know what you're gonna get, you know what I mean? Take the O off of the carbonyl and you add this first carbon, the carbon that's attached to the nitro group. You add your nitro group, you count your carbons to see how many more you, you should put on here. Anyways, my whole point is uh, Chem Player also does a video where he does this reaction. Um, I think he uses methyl nitromethane and uh, benzaldehyde. I'm not sure. But anyways, my point is this reaction now, I'm going to do totally different than Kemp Player, okay? Uh, so when I do mine, I'll be using a Dean Stark apparatus uh, because it is a dehydration reaction, and hopefully I will get a better yield, I hope. Um, but anyways, that's all I know about this reaction. I've told you everything, and I'm getting ready to do it. Um, sooner or later here, if I can get off my lazy butt. But uh, you all have a great day, and always remember, science is great.